All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the uh, oh, I about jumped ahead. I was going to say the one hundred and sixty third. Oh my! This is the sixty third episode of the Political Spotlight. I am your host, Christopher H. Bilbrey. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having a uh, a good Tuesday, a good start to the week. Um, I started this day off kind of uh, going in one direction and thought that uh, maybe we weren't going to get as much done today as I thought we would. But, uh, you know, the good Lord uh, helped out and we were able to do what we needed to do. It was in the plans and uh, I was able to get some things done. Uh, we had a had a pretty good uh, a couple of things happen to us. We'll talk about that later in the show. Uh, we're going to uh, be crunching some numbers tonight. We're going to be talking to a candidate tonight, and uh, we're going to get down to business tonight. So uh, it's uh, tonight's should be an interesting show for folks um, all over the world, but specifically if you live in the city of Muncie, Muncie, Delaware County, and if you live in Newcastle, Henry County. Uh, so the first part of the show, as always this evening, we're going to be doing our... Oh, it is Wednesday. Man, I am all kinds of discombobulated. It says Tuesday here on my my notes. My calendar, <laughs> my calendar says it is the 27th. It's not the 27th, and I know it's not the 27th. I know it is, in fact... Uh, well, it's Wednesday the 25th, but my sheet says Tuesday, so I'm all kinds of uh, discombobulated. This is the 63rd episode on Wednesday evening. The day doesn't really matter because people watch this whenever they want. But uh, the main thing that matters is our guest for our candidate interview. This is the 11th candidate interview in our candidate interview series of 2023 for the municipal elections uh our 11th guest uh, 11th candidate joining us uh will be uh the current council president uh, the at-large counselor uh in newcastle rex peckinpah he'll be joining us in just a moment uh democrat candidate running for re-election he'll be telling us why the good people of newcastle should give him another four years at the council table and uh, hopefully we'll get to hear some uh, good information from uh, Councillor Peckinpah. But then after that interview, we're going to be diving into the state board of accounts reports uh, for the city of Muncie. Uh, I feel like the mayor of Muncie has left some information out of his recent campaign barrage uh, that he has been uh, taking us all down. Uh, I feel like he's left some information out, so we need to dive into the State Board of Accounts reports. And then at the end of the show, we're going to look at some candidate finance reports. Yay! The Delaware County Clerk's Office actually did their job today, did what they're supposed to do, and followed through with getting the candidate finance reports that I requested. So we'll have all of that. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be bringing on our uh, our candidate this evening, uh, Mr. Counselor, uh, special guest, whatever his name uh, is, if I can pop up here. And Kate and I are fighting. Uh, Newcastle City Counselor at large, Rex Peckinpah. Rex, it's good to be with you. Thank you for joining us. Well, I appreciate getting to come on the show, Chris. It's all right if I call you Chris, right? Because absolutely, I know yes, sir. Uh, but yep. uh, yeah, I I'm thrilled to be here. I uh, the first time I met you, I believe, was maybe six years ago. Yeah. You came down to Henry County, maybe five. Yeah. But everybody had warned us down in Henry County <laughs> about this crazy guy from Muncie that was supposed to come down, and they said, "Watch out!" Well, you know, there's something about that. Like if there's a if I'm out somewhere and they say, well, nobody goes there. You better not go there. I'm the guy that wants to go there. And I think I walked right up to you and started talking to you. Yeah. And by the time it was over, I thought, well, you know, he 
he's not too bad. You know? right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, you know, and I, I know sometimes you ask tough questions and that's OK because they ought yeah. to be asked. But uh, anyway, I'm happy to be here. Well, I appreciate well, that. You. I uh, I know um, you um, spent a lot of, a lot of your life as a coach and uh, I actually knew well, of you before, before knowing you. And uh, so I, I um, you know, I, I knew who you were and, and I knew that you were in, uh, involved in government down in uh, in Henry County. And so I was I was going to um, get a hold of you. What I tell all of the, uh, the the Newcastle city officials is when I first was I was minding my own business. I obviously don't live in Newcastle. My grandparents have had rental properties in Newcastle and Henry County. I've spent time in Henry County and Newcastle growing up because of that and various things. My my father owned Muncie Tent and Awning, um, and so I've done a lot of work down in, in Newcastle going uh, through uh, through growing up there and working in Muncie Tent and Awning as a, a high school or middle school or college, whatever. Um, so I've spent a lot of time in, in Henry County, but I don't live there. I don't, I don't have, um, you know, I don't have any property there that's, that's mine per se. Um, but I had people that I knew that asked me to start getting involved down there primarily on the County side, because there was so much craziness going on back during the whole windmill thing. And at that time I didn't have the, I had too much going on personally in my own political fight. And I was just getting involved. I've always been politically active, but I was just getting involved in doing all of this. So I watched from a distance, but then when I finally did get involved, I, I was going to the Henry County meetings, but then I was also going to start poking around in Newcastle. And I had a couple people that I really trust and value their opinion. And they said, no, 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 leave Newcastle alone. Uh, we've got a couple things in place, and we think that the council's doing an all right job, and we're, we we want to see if they continue the upswing. And every now and then, I check back with those people, and they say they're still doing all right. So I've left you guys alone for the most part, but uh, I those people I, are people that I trust and value. So uh, you're getting a good uh, mark in their book, I guess. So well, yeah. you know, I um. I had, I used to have a lot of people, I guess I could have, I didn't meet you and I, cause I didn't come up to Muncie 10 and awning. I used to have people kidding me and say, you, you, where do you get your clothes? Muncie 10 and awning. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, so, so I am familiar with, uh, with the place, but you know, I think we've, we've done a reasonable job. You can always do better. Sure. I, mean, I don't know of any time as a coach that I ever got to the end of a year and thought, well, I, I, I did amazing there's yep. nothing else i could have done there's always something else you can do right, right right so for the people that might not know who you are which i know it might be strange but there's i'm sure there's a few out there tell people give little people a little bit of background on who you are and and why you're where you're currently at well i grew up right here uh in newcastle or very close to newcastle all my life i I went to Newcastle schools. I graduated from Newcastle High School, and um, I played football and wrestled. And, and I, I always say I ran track, but I didn't do much running. I was mainly a thrower. But then I uh, graduated. I went to Purdue University. I wrestled for a couple of years till I realized that I wasn't. I didn't have a scholarship. I realized that I wasn't getting paid to do that. And I had a chance. I, I got a knee injury. I had a chance to start coaching. And I thought, well, this is what I'm going to do and what I'm going to do. So I started coaching. And then uh, basically 43 years later, I retired as, you know, from coaching and teaching and had a, a fairly successful career. Um, you know, my parents, uh, Dale and Margaret Peck and Paul, they uh, were heavily involved in politics uh, as I was growing up. My, uh, they both were very strong Democrats, but I, I, my mother was more hardcore than my dad. <laughs> okay. I think I'm a lot I'm mean, like both of them, but I'm a lot more like my dad because I believe every single person, whether they're Democrat or Republican or whatever, ought to vote, ought to have the right to vote. And I would do anything I could to help them to get to vote. My mom, I remember one day, uh, it was election day, and my dad said, uh, I've got to go over and pick up Mrs. So-and-so. She needs a ride to the polls. 
My mom says, why are you going over to pick her up? She's not ever going to vote for you. She's a Republican. And my dad says, I don't care. She ought to vote. He is a World War II vet. My uncles were World War II vets, and, and they instilled in me and a lot of people in my generation the idea that America was a special place and we ought to stand up for it. And we, ought to, we ought to get out there and do whatever we can. So uh, that's kind of how I got here. Now, I do want to say that as I uh, I, I always kind of wanted to be involved in politics, and one day I finally uh, decided we had a good uh, we had two good council people at large. And I was thinking about running the year before, and I said to myself, "No, those two guys are doing a good job. Why do I want to? Why do I want to get in, in the way?" So I didn't. Well, then one of them stepped down, and uh, I decided to run. Well, they had my picture and a little article in the paper said, "You know, Rex Peck and Paul's filed for city council at large." So at school the next day, and I, I always tried to play down the, you know, I didn't campaign at school or not, you know, uh, yeah. not to. But anyway, this young man comes to my desk. He says, Mr. Peckinpah, I saw where you're running for office. And and I said, yeah, yeah, I am. And he said, city council at large. And I said, yeah. And he said, Mr. Peck. Now he was sincere. He wasn't trying to be mean or anything. He said, Mr. Peckinpah, just how big do you have to be to run for city council at large? And, <laughs> and I, I looked up at him and I said, really big, son, really big. <laughs> you know, but but anyway, uh, so I, I ran and got elected and uh, got elected uh, a couple other, you know, this is my third term and I've been blessed to serve uh, the people of Newcastle. That's the way I look at it. I don't look at it like it's, uh, you know, it's a job or I don't look at it like it's, uh, um, I don't know. I, I just look at it like I'm serving uh, people and that's, and I think our other council members are much the same way. I mean, I know I return the calls and the emails and, and talk to people and try to help people get things done. And I think that most of them do too. That may be why your friends are saying we're doing an okay job. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, well, that's uh, yeah, that's good. I, you know, you, you guys are, when I, when I think of Newcastle, you guys are like kind of right on the, right on the cusp. I mean, you're, you're bigger than you're obviously bigger than Winchester. Uh, I, you know, the, 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 the the three places I've lived in my life are Muncie, London, England, and Winchester, uh, Indiana. And they're all like wildly different from each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, those are my things I kind of judge things off of. And, and, you know, Winchester does things so backwards. They're, they're council members. They go in and they, they put like, you know, if, if the, if a monthly meeting, is an hour and a half long that month they're a council member for an hour and a half and if the next month they have two meetings well they're they're a council member for two meetings worth you know in muncie um our council members are it's a part-time job but they're they're council members you know 24 hours a day seven days a week they've got a lot of them have uh, you know other jobs they're they're real their real job you know if you will uh, but they're still doing the council thing frequently, you know, and um, I feel like you guys down there do more of that approach than than, say, the Winchester approach. And and I respect that uh, out of you guys. So I think that's probably one of the things that's that's good on you guys as well. Um, I guess jumping into just one of the hard questions for you. Uh, I know that this is something that's been on the minds of a lot of people down there. Um, but obviously there's a real big concern with the EMS situation. And I know last night that um, the mayor said that you guys have some news that's going to be breaking this coming uh, Friday at 3 p.m., uh, 3.30. I'm, I'm going to be down there uh, during that. I, I talked to... Uh, the EMS chief today. And, uh, you know, I didn't, didn't get any more information really, but he said, yeah, you want to come down here and hear what we've got going on. But, uh, without giving away anything too much, obviously, uh, what can you say to maybe try to ease the minds of people in Newcastle who's worried about what's going on or, or, you know, as a council member, what do you see, um, you know, as it's on the horizon for the citizens, as far as EMS is concerned, sir. Well, first, you're not going to pry out of me any information about what Friday actually is, but I will say, I will say that Friday 
will be great for the citizens of Newcastle. I mean, I if, if anybody actually needs to go in the emergency, unit, this will be great for them. Um, as far as their EMS goes, I think the, the other side has tried to, to create fear in people simply so they'll believe that if they call 911, they're not going to get an ambulance if they live in the city of Newcastle. Well, to be honest with you, we serve not only the city of Newcastle when people call for an emergency, but we serve all of Henry County. I mean, so, so people are going to get emergency services. What happened, what has happened is that it is getting harder and harder to get a full staff. And it's also, of course, expensive. And so what, what has happened is the EMS uh, uh, director has decided and the mayor have decided that we will not do transfers. Um, and we didn't do transfers for years. That was the county EMS that did that. And we kind of took it over. But I think as we took it over, we began to understand why the county EMS was almost bankrupt and going out of business because it was not uh it wasn't very lucrative or it wasn't very break even. Plus we are, uh, are the number of people, uh, EMTs and, and that type of thing, uh, that number is going down nationwide. And so by, by kind of limiting our service a little bit and not maybe being a taxi service so much, we're going to be able to better serve, uh, the people of Newcastle and Henry County in emergencies. And I think that's what the emergency unit is all about emergencies um before uh, there were times when uh, you know when somebody maybe really needed a transfer from the hospital but a lot of times we were going out and we were we were taking somebody home that really their brother or their sister or their you know somebody should have been coming and picking them up right I mean, I've, been, I've had a hip replacement knee replacement and i never took the ambulance home but, <laughs> but in but people do that and it actually costs everybody uh, in the long run because premiums go up and all these other costs go up. Sure. I don't know if that answers the question, but it took a long time. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's funny. Um, so, okay. And, and uh, again, you know, you're, so you're saying you think that, um, you know, that, you know, saying that basically no one's losing service. Um, but then that coupled with whatever is going to be happening Friday, that you think that the people who may be concerned, you know, should be, you know, happy with what happens Friday, then I guess. Oh, I've got no doubt they should be happy with what happens Friday. I, okay. If they're not happy about it, then I think they have a problem. <laughs> I think you'll agree with me once you hear Friday. <laughs> okay. All right. That I'm, I am definitely looking forward to see what happens um, uh, then. Um, m moving on, uh, I feel like, and I really like this question from one of the, from one of the listeners. I feel like a lot of times when people are campaigning, they like to focus on, uh, you, you get two things. You got, you get the candidates that either completely focus on all of the bad and all of the negative and specifically all of the negative of their opponent. Uh, or you get the people who go so far the opposite direction and it's all positive and it's all, it's almost, you know, fake and it's out of touch. Um, and you got to be able to walk a balance there. But I think that this is a good question. Um, you know, coming off what you said a moment ago about, you know, you never look back and say there's not something that you can't improve on. With that in mind, is there anything that you feel keeps you from being able to do your job, you know, at, Maybe, maybe you're doing it at 80%, and if this one or two things wasn't in your way, you could do it at 100%, or you could do it at 95%. Is there something that you feel you know, blocks you and or the council as a whole from being able to do more? Well, one thing that blocks us a lot of times is, is simply state law, because right. we've got a lot of, uh, of houses that uh, really need to be demolished or, uh, you know, and and basically, uh, by the time they get to the point where they need to be demolished, well, 
we've got to go through such a long and lengthy process of sending this letter and going to court. It takes forever and people get all upset. They think, well, you ought to be able to just go out and tear down the house. Well, it's just not like that. So that'd be one thing. And, uh, you know, we've, we've just got, uh, I think our situation in terms of, um, people on the council, most of us have been on there a while. So we kind of, That's a terrible place for him to freeze in. Yes, it is. Stand by there, folks. We seem to have. Oh, are you there? Yes, I am here still. We we, we lost you, and we kind of. I Was think you, you froze there for a minute. Yeah, yeah you froze there. I, I we'll blame it. We'll blame it on the the state legislature for not getting the statewide uh, internet. <laughs> And of course, there's tax caps, and it's the same. We're not dealing with anything really that other communities uh, our size deal with. I mean, you know, we just we have to keep plugging away. We have to, you know, um, watch the money we spend, use our, um, you know, work for grant money and different things like that. So uh, there's, I don't know. We're, I think we're pretty good at at knowing what we can do now. And I think that's a big plus. Like when I first, I know that uh, the other day I was reading and uh, uh, one of the people running against another uh, councilman, he had made the comment that uh, he thought that, you know, four or eight years was enough. And, and that somebody, once they got to that point, they would never have any more ideas. And, and, and you know, I mean, it was like, you know, I'm going to shrivel up and die or something. At the end right. of like the wicked witch, you know, you're just going <laughs> to melt. And, uh, and, you know, I think that right now today, after 11 years and 10 months, I'm a better council councilman, council person today than ever. Uh, when I started out, I remember I'm, and I'm a lot like these guys that are running for election. I mean, I thought I could get in there and, and change the world and, and do all these things. And I got in there and I realized, well, you can't do that because there's a law that says you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that because you, you can't get enough money to do that. And so anyway, you learn, but then you learn how to do things another way that will help you to be able to get to your goal. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody talks about term limits and whatnot, specifically when you're talking about federal politics and, I mean, look, I, I don't necessarily think that a guy should go in in 1964 into Congress and still be there today. You know, I I uh, I don't know that that's a that's a good thing. Um, and I don't know, you know, maybe that needs maybe more than term limits. Maybe they could look at like an age limit. I, I don't know. I, I go back and forth on term limits because, like you're saying, if somebody's plugging along and the citizens of that community love this person and they they are confident in that person and they want to show them their support and give them another term, then, you know, by all means, rock and roll, give that person another term. So, uh, you know, I, I, I go back and forth on that. But, yeah, I, I don't um, think that that's a problem. Like you said, normally what happens, and I notice this specifically, seems like to be on – the executives like the mayors and, and like uh, county commissioners, it seems like when someone's new and they're running by the time they get in office and, you know, they win and they get in office, well, shoot, it takes them a good year, year and a half to even feel comfortable. And then by the time they've done that, you know, it takes another year or two for them to really hit their stride. By the time they feel good, they're running for reelection. So, you know, it's like if you don't win a second term, you're never really ever just comfortable in there. So, you know, if you do get that second term, by the time you get that second term, that's when you're really kind of plugging along. So it's mm -hmm. almost like the second and third term is your true mm -hmm. real first and second. But um, I yeah, I, I, I locally, I don't have a problem as long as there are other, I mean, you guys went through a period where you didn't have people filing to run that's always bad. Of course, I feel like that's more of an issue for the local parties more than it is for uh, the government, actually. And then, you know, you guys didn't have elections for a couple of years because you just didn't have people on the ballot. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's ever really good. But um, I, I, you know, I'm 
I'm glad that you guys have contested races, but when that happens, you know, obviously you always want the best people to get in. Um, what, what are you guys seeing in the way of economic development and, uh, you know, what, what can you guys be doing to improve on economic development in the next, say, two, four, six years? You know, how, how do you see Newcastle shaping up with that? Well, I certainly um, feel good about what we've done and I feel good about the, the uh, structure we have for economic development. Our economic development commission uh, guy, uh, Corey Murphy, does a great job for us. Uh, we uh, the council uh, deals with tax abatements. We're always willing to look at that for a business coming in. Certainly the re rejuvenation of our downtown is a kind of a, a double edged sword that actually cuts good. Most time it cuts good one way and bad the other, but it's a double edged sword that cuts good on both angles because it not only makes our downtown more vibrant, but when uh, somebody that's thinking about bringing a business here comes in and they see life there, uh, it, they're going to be more apt to come in here and do that and, and do that. We also have, uh, the businesses that we have we have in place now are successful and they're doing well. And I think that's another thing that will cause business to want to come here. Uh, but we are always looking for business. We've taken part in uh, uh, what's called the Ready Program. Uh, and we're taking part also in Make My Move. Make My Move is a, a pretty cool program where they go uh, – uh, a person can uh, actually move here from somewhere else and they get, I believe it's, uh, I could be wrong about this, but I believe they get $5,000 uh, if they come here uh, or they can be somebody that works remotely and, you know, and, and does their job somewhere else, but works for a company here. And that's been, uh, you know, we've had a few people uh, take that offer. Um, I just think there are various, uh, you know, we had Chrysler, we had this huge, uh, biz, you know, business. We had, um, we had modern fold, which was a pretty big company and we've had, uh, uh other ones, uh, Avista or Allegheny Ludlam at one time. And when those type of businesses go out, like when Chrysler went out, of course, Muncie knows that with the, the factories they had, but when, when one of those goes out, it devastates your town. Now we don't want, you know, and I don't think they're going to, but we don't want Crown or we don't want Boar's Head or we don't want any of the other businesses we have to leave. But it will not be the same impact now as what that mega business was, you know, like 25, 30, 40 years ago. And so I think we're working on diversification. And I just feel like uh, I feel like the things that the mayor has done, uh, you know, have been good for us. Um, okay. Kind of keeping in that same vein of, uh, economic development, kind of going back to, uh, a statement that you made a minute ago, um, which, uh, Diane up here says, uh, you talked about tearing homes down and, uh, some of the homes needing to come down because of blight or other reasons. What, what's the plan? What does Newcastle do? Uh, once the home is torn down or, or if there are homes that need to be torn down and they haven't been, you know, and you, that's something that's on a, on a goal, you know, a list to do. What do you guys plan to do or what do you guys do with those properties once the house is down? Well, that's interesting because uh, just over well, a year ago, maybe a little longer, uh, actually probably four or five years ago, we started talking about it, but you know, in government, you talk about it forever. It seems like, uh, that's one of the things when I got on the council, we do move things a little along a little faster than they did before I got on. But beforehand I'd go to meetings and I'm thinking, my gosh, you guys have talked about this for three times. And it's pretty, it makes kind of sense to just go ahead and do it. But, uh, but we, um, uh, instituted a land bank, um, you know, and we talked about the council and we did all the paperwork to do it. Uh, uh, Mr. Walden, our, uh, our uh, counselor in the um, third uh, ward, he, uh, he's on the land bank. But uh, when a property uh, is torn down, especially if it is, uh, and most of the time, by the time a property gets torn down, the city ends up owning the property. Yeah. 
So that lot then goes into the land bank. Now the board of the land bank then can um, can decide to hold on to that property for a while. They most of the time will talk to the neighbors and they'll say, are you interested in having this property? And sometimes the neighbors will buy it. They they're really want to buy it. Sometimes they will take it with the understanding they're going to maintain it and mow the mow the grass and keep the weeds down. And maybe they do, you know, they make a bigger yard or whatever. Uh, we have uh, in that land bank, we have uh, given uh, a property. Um, I know this year we gave a property to Habitat to, for Humanity. I think maybe they paid a dollar for it or something to make it all legal. But uh, then they're building a house on there and doing what Habitat does. And uh, so uh, when something gets torn down or comes into the pos possession of the city, uh, then the land bank, their job is to try to disperse that property in a positive manner. For example, there are houses, uh, the land bank does have some houses in it, and they want to, uh, you know, make it financially possible for somebody that shows them a plan that they can redo this house and make it a viable um, living space. And then they'll, you know, they'll sell them or they'll turn that house over to them and let them work on it. So there is a plan. Again, it's, uh, it's not always fast. It's not always pretty, but it does uh, move us toward our goal of getting a property back on the tax rolls. Because every time we take a lot and we give it to, uh, to this person or we sell it to this person, we're going to start collecting some money back into the city. We also, uh, of course, uh, we're continually working to, uh, to get developers to, uh, to, to build uh, different levels of housing in the community. So are we doing uh, a spectacular job of getting houses torn down and uh, dealing with all that? Probably not but I don't know what city is because it, it costs a lot of money and you just got to, it's just one of those things where you just got to keep plugging away and plugging away. Sure. Absolutely. Um, a minute ago, I asked you kind of what you felt was one of your, your biggest you know, setbacks that we didn't let you do something. Uh, one of the listeners here has asked, what do you feel is either one of your biggest accomplishments as a councilman or the council's biggest uh, accomplishment since you've been there? Well, again, I probably talked too long. No, but you're fine. The, uh, but my biggest accomplishment in some ways is that I make contact with people. I talk to people. I listen to people. I don't know how many people that just appreciate having somebody actually listen to them for a few minutes. And then most of the time I can either get something done or uh, I can call a person who can get it done, or at least I can come back to them and say, you know, that's not probably going to get done. And I can say why. Right. And most of the time, most people are good with that. They appreciate the fact that somebody took a moment to, to try to help them. And oh, yeah. it makes me, it thrills me when I can help somebody, I mean, that's, that's the thing. That's the thing I like best about the job. When I see something that I've sometime I've helped somebody or some project, I mean, we've, I've got, uh, I've got this, I've got like 40 things here. I think it's 40 things that this council has done in the last four years with ARP money and river yeah. boat money. These are all things that weren't, in the budget that weren't budgetary items. They were money we spent. And, you know, like we, we, uh, uh, we have done several studies and people always, every time you pass something, like we studied, we, we passed uh, every, you know, every study that you do seems like it's 50,000 because that they're just all fit. Well, how much is it going to cost for us to get a comp plan? Well, 50,000. How much is it going to cost for us to get a bike ped plan? Uh, 50,000. You know, <laughs> Uh, but anyway, we did a comp plan. Well, that comp plan, people griped, you're spending money on a comp plan. Well, then that comp plan turned around and we got probably half a million dollars worth of grants and stuff because of the comp plan. Uh, you know, we did the bike ped plan. We had a bike ped, ped plan and we were able to uh, 
to apply to the state for safe routes to school. And we've got a, side, a nice sidewalk uh, from all the way down Main Street that our kids can walk to Riley School on. And we've got a trail that we named after Ted Fitzgerald out by Wilbur Wright School in the north end of town that takes kids. Kids used to have to, if they wanted to go from Wilbur Wright, if they wanted to take their classes down to Wilbur Wright or from Wilbur Wright to Osborne Park, which is a nice park we have, they would have to get the police to come. They'd get the kids and the kids would start walking. The kids would have to walk on the road. Wow. And- Car would follow them and go ahead of them and take them down to Osborne Park. Well, now they've got a really nice trail. Maybe when you're over uh, Friday, to drive out by there and you can see it. But we've got a really nice trail and the kids can get on there and walk all the way to Osborne Park, you know, and oh, wow. way back. And so, you know, uh, those I feel really good about those things. We also I spent about uh, uh He, he, he froze again. Stand by, oh, folks. We just it's that JD internet. It'll it's be all right. There. Give him a second. Yeah, well, down there it's uh Chris Will. This is a better pose, though. Oh, here we are. Yeah, it was. There you you froze, you froze again, sir. Well, you're, I'm sorry. I get you know, I guess you're I, fine. I guess I get uh scared, you know, or something. <laughs> but uh but we spent about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars of of ARP and riverboat money uh, to redo our police station. Now our police station for years was in the bottom floor in the back of our city building. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, it was a very small, our chief had an office. We had an office for our administrative assistants and assist, but our officers that were on duty, they were in this room and this room had uh, big picture windows. I mean, any Yahoo could have driven by and, and, and blasted them, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. if they, when they got back, I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't a very safe situation. It wasn't a very usable situation. So we had an opportunity to um, uh, the uh, art Duke, I believe it was, I can't remember if it was Duke or RMC, but they gave us some buildings, some pretty good buildings, but we took one of those buildings and we renovated it. And now it's our police station and it's a very nice facility. They opened that uh, earlier this year and uh, I mean, it it takes good care of them, and they're safe, and they're able to. I was in there the other day getting some records, and I was really amazed at how what a that that is a really nice building. So yeah, but that was that was our uh, the council. You know, the mayor kind of started the, some of that work. Uh, I give him a lot of credit for getting the building for us, and then we kind of finished it off. Uh, you know, with with ARP money, but the council wanted to do that. Uh, recently, we. Uh, we redid Trojan Lane. Now we caught grief about that because we got flowers now. And they said we we're using tax dollars to buy flowers. Well, yes, but uh, if they were tax dollars, we really couldn't use for some other things. Sure. So, uh, we'll go with that. And we've, uh, uh, you know, we've removed a lot of dead, you know, of course, the ash trees, they all died, uh, you know, around the Midwest and stuff, a lot of them. And so we had a lot of dead trees in our parks that we were concerned were just going to fall on people. And we took uh, money and we got those trees taken down. And, uh, you know, I could, I could talk about that each year, each year we, uh, we put aside, uh, I think this year we put aside maybe $50,000 that people, uh, we've done that out of riverboat money for years, but people can come in and if they feel they want a new sidewalk, it's almost the point where they can get a sidewalk for close to nothing. All they got to do is apply and use a, uh, a certified contractor and, and they can get reimbursed from our sidewalk project. So, wow. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, I mean, uh, somebody complains. They said, well, you take credit for everything. Well, I don't, I don't, I, I'm just happy we're getting something done. Right. You know, and, and I'm, 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 I'm glad about this stuff. Anyway, well, very, yeah, very good. Um, well, I, I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us. Uh, we've had you on for a little bit. Um, before we let you get off, out of here, is there anything that, that you feel that the citizens of Newcastle need to know? Anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to cover? Is there anything that you guys, uh, you know, that you just are, are burning to get out there for the public to know? Well, you know, you had uh, Mayor York on last night, 
And there's a lot of people that are, uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot because I don't know how many they actually have. Cause you'll see on Facebook, there might be four or five people that make a two mile long uh, thread. <laughs> yes, you know, so oh, yeah. It looks like a lot of people, but it's not. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, you know, his opponent wants to cast dispersions on him. Uh, you know, uh, the mayor has done a pretty darn good job. And he and I, he and, you know, he and I have grown up together. I'm glad. I know they were stalking him and taking pictures of his house. <laughs> I'm glad they haven't found the picture back when we were like 14 years old and I was chasing him with a two by four. And I was going to, he, he wouldn't be the one if I caught him. But, but you know, uh, he and I have, he and I have been uh, friends. If, if he called me and he said, I need your help, I'd be there. If I called him, he'd be here, you know, but we don't always agree. I oh, mean, yeah. Had yeah. Oh, where yeah. We, went like, we went like that. I want know? some of those and, meetings. <laughs> and so anyway, but now, you know, uh, his opponent brings out something from two years ago and brings out something I said, I said at the time, I didn't, I, I didn't trust him. Well, I came to find out a few weeks later and, you know, and God bless Brenda Greider. Yeah. Brenda's a great lady. She's a wonderful person. But when she got in office, she didn't have the experience. She got a, a new software and things just, things blew up on her. Yeah. We blame the mayor for um, some of these financial problems that were going on when we said we didn't trust him. In reality, it was the fact that he wasn't getting the reports. He was operating like, you know, and he, you still got to pay the bills. Doesn't matter. Sure. If, you know, and he was operating like somebody, if, if, if you had my checkbook and you said, Hey Rex, I've balanced the book and you, I mean, he didn't know how much money he had, but we, we, you know, he was the mayor chief executive yeah. Yeah. and we, and we, we blamed him. And over the course of time, you know, so I, I saw him, I didn't trust him. And with the knowledge I had, I didn't, but we found <laughs> out that it wasn't quite the story. You know, and he knows I, you know, he knows I trust him, but I trust him. So anyway, his opponent's saying, well, Rex Peckinpah said that he doesn't trust him. And I had an article or a letter in a paper today there in Newcastle that said, well, I trust Greg York, but I don't trust Clay Morgan to run the city of Newcastle. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. If, 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 if he gets elected, we're in for a wild, wild ride you know? <laughs> Yes, you know, because he just wants to please his, uh, his uh, upper crust friends and use yeah. it to, to get to some bigger office, you know, but anyway, uh, I just want everybody out there to know I trust Greg York a hundred percent. And I know that I know Greg York will never quit the citizens of Newcastle. And I know that he will work uh, day and night because I've seen him work day and night. Yeah. And that's where I'll leave it, Chris. I really oh, hey. do appreciate getting to come on. No, you can yeah. have me on anytime you want, but you yeah. know, I'll dominate the conversation probably. Hey, no, there's no problem with that. I, I like, I like when other people do the talking. Can I give you now this, can I, yeah. this is like my imitation uh, because I've listened to Clay Morgan in, um, at, in three or four different forums and yeah. interviews. Okay. Yeah. I've listened to him. Now this is, what Clay Morgan, now his lips are moving, but this is, you know, it, 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 it's like if I turn the chair around and face the wall, that's how much information you're going to yes. get from him. At yes. least that's my opinion. I'm not afraid to say it. I, <laughs> shoot, I don't, you know, if everybody just said, you know, we hate Rex Peckinpah because he said this and they don't elect me, I'll come back here <laughs> and I'll have fun playing with my dog and working in my yard and doing, you know, all that stuff. I mean, it, yeah. it's okay. The yeah. difference between uh, somebody in a local office who, uh, you know, is there for a long time and a federal office at local office. I mean, we get some money, but we don't get very much, but yeah. on the federal <laughs> level, they're dealing with, you know, hundred. <laughs> ah. We're timing it. Timing it. Five, four, three, two, one. Maybe. He's back. 
<laughs> no. Froze him again. I think I really Sorry. think Biden, Biden, and Mitch, Biden and Mitch McConnell cut me off. I think. I think <laughs> they, the they must have. I, I was talking about all the money, and and that's yeah. why they stay in for that long. If they were making, you know, uh, you know what what an average person makes, they wouldn't stay in Washington for you know eighty years or something. Right. Yeah. So, that's, anyway, that's, that's. I, I appreciate it, Chris. I'll see you Friday. Hey, yeah, no problem. Uh, be before before we run, I want to say, uh, and I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. Are are you actually are you opposed or are you not opposed? Oh. Well, now you got me started again. Yeah. Two things. First, uh, that you vote uh, in the council at large, you yeah. vote for two. Mm -hmm. Well, we have three people running. We have uh, myself, Ed Hill, and Lynn Purdue, who's the other incumbent. Okay. Um, and um, I'm a Democrat, Ed's a Democrat, and Lynn's a Republican. Now, uh, Lynn doesn't do very well at attending the meetings. I, I, that, I mean, he's my classmate. I, I, again, like Greg, I would be there to help him in a minute. But, you know, I, I think you ought to show up. I'm, I was appalled last night about that lady in Winchester. That's amazing. Oh, uh, it's crazy. I, couldn't, I, in good conscience, couldn't do that. Yeah, that's not anyway, the thing I wanted to tell you, because and I think I made a, a comment last night, but when uh, when Lieutenant Governor Suzanne, and that's another thing, people got on us because we were going to do we, we agreed to do a, a 50, I think fifty thousand dollars again, a study on our uh, on our main street. We, we and they were all griping about that. Well, we we spent the money and we got two million dollars back. I think that's a pretty good investment. But when the lieutenant governor was here, she actually, uh, and she had just endorsed Clay and, you know, the video. And then she actually said to Mayor York, do you have an opponent in this election? <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. you know, so that just proves your point. But anyway, yeah. thanks. Thanks for letting me come on. Hey, I no problem. No problem. I appreciate you uh, talking with us. You're, you're welcome here anytime. We'll definitely follow what goes on in the election. And uh, we'll see you on Friday, and uh, we'll we'll see what goes on. All right, thanks, All right. Chris. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Councilor at Large, Council President. He's actually the Council President of the Newcastle uh, City Council, and uh, he's been there for three terms. This is he's he's wrapping up his third term running for his, uh, hopefully for a fourth term. And uh, we we are very thankful that he came on. We uh, set this up for him to come on like three weeks ago. And uh, we we missed uh, a connection. And then uh, we, we missed a couple other connections. I'm glad we were able to get him on. That was Rex Peckinpah. And I'm finally glad we were able to uh, connect with him. So uh, please remember, folks, it's different wherever you're at. For example, in the city of Muncie, there are three at-large members. So if you go in there, and specifically if you're somebody that picks a straight party ticket, if you pick straight Democrat or straight Republican in the Muncie ballots, you will not vote in the at-large race it leaves the at-large race blank. That's that's all that happens. Um, so you have to, if you pick straight Republican, you also have to flip to the at-large race and select the Republican candidates. That's why I always say, don't pick straight ticket. If you want to vote for all of the Republicans, you can do that, but you need to go down and select each and every one of them. If you want to vote straight Democrat, you can do it, but go down and vote for each and every one of them. But there, you shouldn't ever vote straight party anyways because that's insane. Nobody, just because they have an R or a D by their name, is is perfect because they've got that R or D there. That, that's, that's stupid. Uh, so, yeah, that was uh, our Newcastle segment. Uh, that was uh, Rex, and uh, we, we wish him well in that race. We'll be following that, and I want to thank you guys all for the questions that you threw in there as well. If uh, you guys ask anything that he did not answer, at the end of all of these, I always shoot the candidate 
the link and let them know how they can uh, watch and how they can share. And then I always let them know that, hey, you might want to go back in and look at the the uh, candidates or the excuse me, the, the viewers. I let the candidates know you might want to look at the viewers uh, comments because there might be other questions that they can then later come back and answer if they so choose. So if you have asked questions, don't get offended if they don't answer right away. Because as you may or may not know, your uh, live uh, comments don't show up for 24 hours for whatever reason. Once we kill the feed, uh, they'll be there for a little bit. But then, like, say, tomorrow morning, they don't show and they won't show for about 24 hours. But they do eventually show and people can go back and answer. So uh, just FYI there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, from there, we're going to talk about Muncie. And, and I got to say, when it comes to uh, politics, a lot of times dealing with politics, you deal with money, uh, you deal with figures, and uh, I that's not my strong suit. I am by no means a mathematician. Uh, I do not like numbers, and uh, when you start talking about numbers and figures and adding and subtracting and multiplication, doing all that, it does not make sense to me unless I'm looking at it, I'm hearing it, I'm working the problem, and I need to do that two or three or four times over. So numbers are horrible, specifically when talking with government and you get into talking about the uh, the line items and the funds and how much money's here and how much money's there or how much money you're going to, you know, how many uh, projects you're going to have and what the bids are and what these bids entail. Some of that gets really in the weeds and it's really hard to follow and it's, it's not a lot of fun and it, it can be dry. I do my very best because I know I'm like that and I'm a political junkie and this stuff is very difficult for me to follow. Because of that, I try my very best to make anything like this uh, easily understandable. So the State Board of Accounts uh, from time to time will do these audits on the municipal governments, the county governments, the state government. And they'll come in and they tell you, you know, if your house is in order, basically. You know, it's like if if you have a, a financial guru come in and tell you, you know, uh, you need to make a budget or you're spending too much here, you're spending too much there, or you know, you're 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 saving here, you, you know, whatever. That's kind of like what they do. And what happens is they will ding you, they give you these reports, and they tell you, you know, you're it's you're in the hole here or, or this isn't good or you didn't file these um, <clears throat> forms on time. So, you know, we couldn't really see what you're doing. And it's really interesting because, um, you know, the State Board of Accounts reports have been out for quite some time now. And uh, yeah, they do the audits. They do the audits every year. Uh, and these, these, um, they've been out for some time now. And there is a good number of things that is questionable about the city of Muncie. But you're not hearing anybody talking about this. You're not hearing the controller talking about this. You're not hearing Dan Reidenauer talking about this. You're not hearing really the council talking about it. I'm I'm really shocked that it's been so quiet, specifically because what some of these things are showing. So I, I made a post earlier today, and I'm going to show you this one post, and then we're going to just jump into uh, the rest of the the. Uh, the reports, but I, I made a post earlier in the day. Uh, and give me a second here. I'll share it here. <laughs> Dan be lying. Uh, okay. So here we are. 
I know it's going to be hard to see, but I'll I'll let you see it. Um, and I, I'll read this to you. So it says, uh, Indiana State Board of Accounts performed audits on the city of Muncie this year, 2023. The audits looked at information between January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020, January 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. So in, in the year 2023, they look for the year 2022. Next year, they will look for 2023. That's how it goes, you understand? <clears throat> so it says, the audit findings are documented in three separate reports that were all dated September 21st, 2023. The first report is described as supplemental compliance. The audit type is supplemental. And of course, I posted a link to the first report. The second report is described as financial compliance financial and compliance. The audit type is federal compliance audit. And then I shared a link to the second report. And then the, th the third uh, report is described as financial uh, compliance, financial and compliance. And the audit type is federal financial audit. The link to the third report is here. I then go on and say all three of these reports are important and I would highly recommend all voters in Muncie click on the link, the links above, read through each report and get an idea of what is really going on in Muncie, Indiana. I will also be highlighting each of these reports on upcoming episodes of my nightly political commentary program called The Political Spotlight, which can be found here. That said, I want to take a moment and point out a specific item that I found on page 39 of report number one. It can be seen in pictures one, two, and three below. I have highlighted the parts that I am most interested in. What you're going to see is you're going to see something that says lesser, lesser, farmers, bank, and trust. Purpose, 2021 BOT, bot, solar project, annual lease payment, 300, uh, $307,092. That's the annual payment. Lease beginning date, 7-1 of 22, which would have been right around the time that all of that was going through. Lease ending date is January 1st of 2042. That's a pretty big gap between 2020 and 2022 and 2042. So I go on and say, so can anyone tell me what I'm looking at here? Some kind of payment the city of Muncie is paying for, uh, you know, 2022 to 2032 20, is 10 years. And then 32 to 42 is 20 years from year 2022 last year through 2024. The payment looks like a lot of money. Three hundred and seven thousand dollars more or less for something called the 2021 bot solar project what in the hell is that i know nothing went forward with mayor dan's doomed solar project or at least that's what i thought so can someone tell me what this is look this might not be anything and that would be perfectly great. I would love to come on and say, okay, false alarm. This was nothing, no issue, no money out, whatever. I would love, I, I hope I get to say that. Because if I don't, if I don't get to say that, and there's not an explanation, and this is something that the city is paying and has been paying and will be paying, that's a problem because this looks funky. So I said, someone needs to explain what this is. I then tagged Mayor Ridenour, Deputy Mayor 
uh, Richard Ivey, communications director Michelle Owen, gatekeeper Shireen Wagley, counselors Jeff Green, uh, Jeff Robinson, Brandon Garrett, Brad Marshall, Jerry Dishman, uh, Roger Overby, Troy Ingram, Aaron Clark. Okay, named them all. And then I named the candidates so they would know what's going on too. Steve Craig, Josh Talby, she who shall not be named, Nick Talby, uh, Sarah Gullion, Andrew Pop, Harold Mason, Kyle Temple, uh, Audie Barber, Holly Yipe, uh, William McIntosh Sr., and Steve L. Smith. Uh, so this is what I'm looking at, folks, so you have an understanding. This is what I'm seeing. Muncie, Indiana, State Board of Accounts report. Lessor, First Farmers Bank and Trust. Purpose, 2021 bot solar project. Annual lease payment, $307,000. $92. Beginning date, 7-1-22. Ending date, 1-1-42. So what is this? We didn't, we shouldn't be Dan bought the, the property. Did he take out a bond on the project before he had council approval? Well, I would certainly hope not. I mean, I don't know what we would be leasing. I, I mean, well, I, What the hell did they do with the money? Well, yeah, where, where's this money? What is this? So, so I guess the number one thing I need to know is what is this? What are we looking at? Yeah. I, I need to know. And, and, so people understand, this is my document that I created so you could see the numbers. I want to show you what it looks like on the actual, what, what it actually looks like. So here's mine up above. Here's the one on the actual form. It's got this. It's got First Farmers Bank and Trust. Then in the next line over, it says purpose, uh, you know, Lease of copiers is nothing. Look at the highlighted 2021 bot solar project. And then over are these three things. This is, is what it is. And so I right here is what it looks like on the actual sheet. First Farmers Bank and Trust, 2021 bot solar project, 307-092-7122. One one twenty forty two. So, what is this? I have issued a request. I have. I, I've done anything you can do, and I've not heard anything yet. Matter of fact, you can see. I shared this. back down the road. 14 hours ago I shared this at 744 this morning tagging the people in the know and I've still not got an answer I've not got an answer from anybody on the council I've not I've not got an answer from the controller's office I've not got an answer from the mayor's office I cannot figure out what this is and this is Definitely concerning because if we're paying, well, let's just take a look at what that would be. Three hundred and seven. Let's take a look at what that would be. Three hundred and seven zero ninety two.
times 20. Oh, my God. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's 6,141,840. So, six without million, interest, without interest. Yeah, with, with, yeah, 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 yeah. With, without interest. So, you know, with interest, good Lord. Um, this is definitely <laughs> this is definite. <laughs> I'm literally getting crap from my grandparents. My my grandmother just texted me and said, "We're here, same hair." They're they're trying to get me to cut my hair. <laughs> I I'm going tomorrow. I'm going to try to get it done. I need to get it done. I need to get it done. It's driving me nuts. Uh I just didn't want to wait for the person to stay. That's hilarious. Uh but all right, back uh, <laughs> back to work. Uh yeah, this is a this is not good. I, I don't like this. I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm not happy with it. Uh, and somebody from the city of Muncie needs to tell us what this is. Uh, along with that, we have a couple of other things here. I want to see. Uh, let me make sure which one. I'm Christopher. Um, what? Dan B. Lyons got an interesting comment. I'm not sure that it's just one payment a year. Check out the first and last dates of payments. It looks to me it may be a twice a year payment. On that three hundred thousand, I'm not. I'm also not sure that this is just one payment a year. Check out the first and last dates of payments. It looks like it may be twice a year payment to me. Go back and look and see what he is referring to. Okay, what's he saying? I'm also not sure that it's just one payment a year. Check out the first and last dates of payments. It looks like it may be twice a year to me. Hmm. So I get what you're saying. So you're saying they pay once in July and they pay once in in uh, January. And if that's the case, then it's like twelve million. Hmm. Uh. Man, I don't know. That's a very good possibility. Well, let's take a look here and see. Um, let's take a look here and see. The first one is 615A. 615A. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is the first report. Uh, this, is the fir this is the report that is the uh, supplemental compliance audit type supplemental. And uh, we'll blow this up here so you guys can see. Uh, so it has table of contents, schedule of officials, independent auditor's report, uh, financial statement, and accompanying notes. So let's just read down through here. All right. So here's here's how long these people are, their term is. Um. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this just says who the person is, and uh, you know what what they're doing, and that they are uh, independent auditors. Report, you know, letting them know that you know they are, um, <clears throat> you know, not somebody related to you know the city of Muncie, not someone related to a political figure or somewhat political opponent. Yada yada yada. Okay. And so that's that's what that is. Independent auditors report, responsibilities management, uh, financial statement. Um, 
you see here where it says um, management is also responsible for the de design, implementation, maintenance of the internal controls uh, relevant to the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statement that is free from material. Uh, mis uh, misstatements, whether due to fraud or error. Auditors' responsibilities for the audit of the financial statement. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurances about whether the financial statements as a whole is free from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or uh, error, and to ensure the auditor's report that includes our opinions. Reasonable assurances is high level of assurances but it's not absolute assurances. And therefore, it's not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with GAAS and government auditing standards will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. The risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher than one from resulting for error. As fraud may involve collusion, forgery, internal admissions, misrepresentations, or the override of internal controls. Misstatements are considered material if there is a substantial likelihood that individually or uh, aggregate, uh, they would influence the judgment of a reasonable user based on the financial statement. Okay, and so it's just going down and telling you like what they do and what they're looking for and, and uh, whatnot go on there. So Let's get down here to the actual report. This page left blank. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so that's just some more housekeeping issues. Okay. Here's where we start getting into the city's uh, information. And it looks at it looks it breaks down the funds you see there it's got the general fund and uh it's got uh the MVH the motor motor vehicle highway local road and street MVH restricted parking meter economic develop uh development operating clerk's records perpetuation and so it's got, it's got everything there on uh basically uh, <clears throat> the uh, the budget cash cash and investment one one twenty two receipts disbursements cash and investment on December thirty uh, first twenty twenty two so you can go down here and see kind of what this is saying uh, you need to please go back and read these for yourself when you get a chance because you, you it's it's pretty interesting to look through everything that they, they've got here. Um, so they, they, this is still, this is still the, the budget. Okay. Let me see. All right, we're getting there. Fund. Kate, are you on there? Yes. Do you did, have did have you looked through this one? Which one is this one? This is the fir the first one. The um... no, I jumped to like the summaries at the end where they start like putting up numbers. 
and I about flipped a poo when I saw solar bot project. What? That got defeated. Why are we paying any money on that? Yeah, that's really strange. Let me get. Now that the. I'm going to go away again. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Okay. All right. So here is the first line where you see where it has the first Farmers Bank and Trust, the 2021 Bot Solar Project, the 307 92, <clears throat> 7 1 2022. 1 1 2024. Uh, let's see here. Then it's got description of debt. I know you're losing your mind staring at numbers, so I have a funny to show everybody. I just got sent this from someone who said it arrived in the mail today. And the irony. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the irony. Yes, yes. Well, it's not the ways of the past. Apparently, I know. It's, it's like, still ongoing. Yeah, very, very currently ongoing. And it's like, wait a minute here. Like, yeah, this, this doesn't seem to be like uh, too, too, too far in the past. It's amazing. Okay, capital assessments are reported at actual and estimated historical cost based on appraisals or deflated current, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Other reports. Okay. So everything seemed to be good there. We'll jump over here to this one. Which one of these, Kate, is, shows the problem? Where what where did we have the thing that was highlighted? Was it in the did I send that in Messenger? Wasn't it sent in Messenger, dear? I'll go back and look. Yeah, I think it was sent in Messenger, Christopher. I the thing that you sent in Messenger, wasn't it just the that you highlighted crap on your Facebook page. Y yeah. Okay, here. All right. Wait a minute. Now there's the one that you sent that was the the bot. I'm tr okay, I'm trying to find where where the crap is that I had highlighted, what report that was in. Okay. Yeah, right here. Okay. City controller. Okay, city controller. So that's going to be in the first one. Financial transactions and reporting. Okay, give me a second here, folks. So I apologize about this. It takes a minute getting through all of this. Let me. Uh, I just want to be able to present. It's it because it's all er, everything looks identical. Is the problem with this? It's all very standard. Okay, responsibilities. I want to get to the part where it is. 
is talking about the controller. Okay, right here we go. Financial transaction and reporting. Well, Dan B. Lyon, Bill Bree, go to the first one that is 19 pages long. Yeah, I found it. Okay, so okay. that's, there we go. I, I know you're off screen, so I'm sorry for interrupting again. No, 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 you're fine. I was just trying to get some, I was looking through three different reports that all looked identical. Uh, okay, here we go. Is that on the screen? Oh, yeah, it is. I got to blow it up. Okay. So financial transactions and reporting. Okay. Similar comment appeared in prior similar comment appeared in prior reports blah 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 entitled internal controls condition and context receipts. The city had not designed or implemented a system of internal controls which would include appropriate segregation of duties that would likely be effective in preventing or uh, detecting and correcting errors related to receipts. The same individual entered numerous receipts into the accounting system and prepared the blank the bank reconcilements. Additionally, no documentation was presented indicating the receipt postings were viewed by another individual. Financial close and reporting. The city had, had not designed or implemented a system of internal controls, which would include appropriate segregation of duties that would likely be effective in preventing or detecting and correcting errors related to financial reporting. The city's financial information was prepared and electronically submitted by the city controller to the Indiana Gateway for Government Units Financial Reporting System, which was the source of the, of the city's annual financial report. The financial statement, uh, an oversight or review process was documented, but did not prevent or detect or correct errors to ensure that the financial information recorded and reported was accurate and complete. Due to the lack of internal controls, the following errors occurred. Payroll fund receipt and dis disbursements were omitted, resulting in receipts and disbursements and the ending cash and investment balance being uh, understated by uh, a lot of money, okay? By $37,469,731. By thirty seven million four fifty six seven eighty six and by twelve thousand nine forty five respectively. The city court fund receipts and disbursements were omitted, resulting in receipts, disbursements, and the ending cash investment balance being understated by nine hundred forty seven million, nine hundred twenty two million, and twenty four million or twenty four thousand. <clears throat> RDC TIF 
2022 bonds fund disbursements were understated by 148,881 and ending cash investments balance was overstated by that same amount. Audit adjustments were proposed, accept, accepted by the city, and made to the financial statement for the errors listed above. There were other uh, immaterial errors for which the financial statements was not adjusted. The Indiana State Board of Accounts is required under Indiana Code 511-127-E to define acceptable minimal level of internal control uh, standards to provide clar uh, clarifying guidance. The state examiner compiled the standards contained in the Mutual Uniform Internal Control Standards for Indiana Political Subdivisions. All political subdivisions subject to the audit by State Board of Accounts are expected to adhere to these standards. The standards include adequate control activities according to this manual, and then it goes down through there, okay? And it tells them how to, to stop this. So then it goes over the appropriations. Excess amount expended. Uh, same comments also appeared in prior. So th what this is saying, what this line is saying is, this is issues that they've had this year, last year, the year before, and they keep having them. So when Dan Reidenauer is out here saying, I am a fiscal genius and we are doing all of these things. The citizens of Muncie needs to say, but what? What? So all from the year 2022, when let's, let me be very clear here. Okay. I want to be real clear. Dan Reidenauer wants people to think that he was responsible for the White River Lofts, okay? He literally wrote a post that said, my experience, again, delivers a long-term strategic approach to create a big win of roughly $76,110 in the next 10 years on this company for property tax alone. But what some of you might not recall, it was Dennis Tyler that did most of the work and the development of this. And it's not just crazy Christopher Bilbrey saying that or crazy Sarah Beach saying that or a bunch of Democrats that love Dennis. It's Corey Olenkamp that said that when he was a reporter for the Star Press. Keep in mind, Corey Olenkamp worked in the Ridenauer administration as a communications director for like a month and a half or, or half of a month, one or the other. So Corey wrote that, okay? Now, I understand that some of you may not have saw this. Along with this thing that he was taking, his, his campaign was also uh, putting out a lot of other things out there that Dan Ridenauer is responsible for, similar to this. Muncie citizens, I, your mayor, Dan Leid Leidenauer, am responsible for this mostly useless tower. So be sure to vote for me because I did this. And he stands in front of the bell tower at Ball State University, which he's stating that he took credit, uh, he, he's taking credit for. Only uh, a political and financial genius like myself could bring Muncie something this great. And obviously I did because you can see it in this picture. And here Dan is standing uh, because he says, so vote to reelect me, Dan Leidenauer, mayor of Muncie. Says, and who doesn't remember when Dan and his financial genius was able to get Muncie, our very own purple dog that guarded the city from the, from the east? What a guy and what a dog. All right, moving on. Look at, look at this. Who, who, who doesn't remember this? Look, folks, I, Dan Leidenauer, turned this otherwise worthless building into a school for all of your little kids. Vote to reelect me, Dan Leidenauer, Muncie mayor. I did this. He even says, I did this. Look, it's, it's him. Look at this one. Who, who, I mean, yes. Look what I brought to the west side of Muncie. Vote to reelect Dan Leidenauer, Muncie Mayor. 
I don't care what anybody says. Dan and I know the Muncie Colts are going all the way to the Super Bowl. Thanks, Dan. Plebes of Muncie, look at the Muncie Civic Theater. You only have this fine establishment because of my economic development experience. If you want more things like this, reelect me, Dan Leidenauer. Okay? And so it's just very important that people realize when he's saying things like this, it's as stupid as him saying those other things. All right? Meanwhile, this man who's running around bragging about his his experience and his expertise is getting this to happen. Like Charlize Jameson wrote, I want to, I'm going to go. Do you mind if I read your two things, Charlize? Do you mind if I put you on blast here for a second? Because I thought, I think what you wrote is very, very interesting, very telling. And it's, it's very, uh, very good. Looking for it. Okay. Uh, are you okay with that, Charlize? That say they excess, uh, excess expended one point three million in the general fund. Let me go look here real quick. It's what it looks like. Disbursements exceeded the amount budgeted for the following funds. Excess am amount expended. One million three five one thousand one oh three. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Uh Charlie says, transparency and truth, day one. Mayor Dan Ridenauer gets credit for completing phase one of the riverfront development that our previous mayor, Dan, uh, Dennis Tyler, started and got off the ground, but taking credit for the project, as he does in yesterday's post on his campaign Facebook page, see link below, is simply untrue. White River Development downtown has been in the discussion and planning stages for years. But it was former Mayor Dennis Tyler's administration who got this project going. See photo. Mayor Ridenauer ought to not attempt to cl uh, claim credit for another's uh, work. It's not a good look, Dan. And then right here is, of course, uh, the picture of uh of uh Dennis looking about all of this well before the mayor was uh mayor right now was in office now i want you guys to 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 look at this Coffee. Where's that at, Charlize? Oh, day two. Transparency and truth, day two. Election day, 13 days. Thank you to former Mayor Dennis Tyler, who worked closely with Gary Danner to get this project moving. Danner's mobile power unit project 
uh, was hatched during the Tyler administration, along with plans for this East Side headquarters building for the previous administration. This is yet another example of Dan Ridenour for Muncie Mayor taking full credit for other people's work. Much credit for this also rests in the Delaware County government for financing it. Dan gets credit for his portion of the work, but he is being disingenuous again in this post. It is not a good look. And of course, we I want to show I want to share that with you. So that's that's what that is. So now I want to come up here and click on this and see. I didn't see, I didn't actually see. On the east side of Muncie, the uh, Kesselman in Energy Park is a new 80,000 square foot building that is the new headquarters of manufacturing for D.D. D. D. Danner. When I took office as mayor, this industrial park considered of a couple of streets, consisted of a couple streets and water treatment facility re uh, required by IDEM. The location was otherwise vacant with no uh, momentum at all. Oh my God! Since my time on the city council and my yes vote for development in April of 26, but with a lot of effort, this building has uh, got this, this building got constructed. That does not sound like Dan Ridenour. Who is writing this? But with that effort, this building got constructed. We began working with the KPEP developer through numerous zoning, planning, environmental, and federal hurdles. Eventually, we were able to issue permits, and the new building is assessed at $6.8 million and starts, in, uh, starts generating property tax revenue in 2024. Nice win after lots of persistence by both developer and my administration. This property will bring in two million. Oh my God, two million forty thousand dollars in property taxes over the next ten years. It took experienced leadership, collaboration, and this uh, dis disciplined long-term approach to bring this success for Muncie business and financial experience matters. I have the experience as a former banker. Uh, and as your mayor, I ask for your vote on November 7th. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, let me be very clear. This mayor is absolutely absolutely lying. And he is freaking out. I'm hearing that he is at his melting point because he's not being able to handle all of the pushback he's getting. And I know that they're scared because his hardline Dan addicts are starting to unblock people that they have had blocked for, for years to fight with them and to draw them into battles. And people are starting to try to draw people from keeping their eye on the ball to getting in little fights. Don't get caught up with that, folks. They're also lying, lying, lying. I want to show you, I want to show you a very gross example of someone trying to lie. Trying have you ever heard have you ever heard the saying they say it in court all the time? Ringing that bell. Once you ring the bell, you can't unring it. Once you ring the bell, you can't unring it. When somebody's heard something, doesn't matter if, if, if a woman accuses a man of rape. Oh, you've raped me. And they say it and they put it in the newspaper. Well, three months later, they might come back out and say, no, that didn't happen. But everybody that heard that initial thing, they're not going to hear that retraction. They're not going to know that. So that person, in some people's eyes, are always going to be is always going to be painted as a rapist. Okay? Well, I want to show you an example of these people lying about Jeff Robinson. 
Okay. If Jeff Robinson is not good for the job because of whatever reason, cool. Give us those reasons. But if if you're saying he's not good because then you try to make up some fake bullcrap. Oh, he overdosed on gummies. Oh, he was in a bathroom porta potty at, at the at the at the uh, uh, reservoir, and you try to turn that into something salacious. Look how far. Look how far these people come uh, to, to, and how far they're willing to go with, with this. Uh, Kate, I sent two things in the uh, political spotlight. Can you put those up? So keep in mind, they said the crap about, they said the crap about Jeff and the gummies. And I said, all right, show me the police report. Show me the 911 call. Show me the, the EMS run log. There were none of these things. I want you to look at this. Okay. This might be a little hard to see. Okay, this is one of the head Dan addicts. Lindsay Cory Boy Fink. She posted this on social media. And this is what she wrote. Citizens of Muncie, it has come to my attention that council president and Democratic mayoral, mayoral candidate Jeff Robinson was recently involved in improper and illegal behavior. Ooh, salacious. What did he do? This is appalling and very unbecoming of someone involved in municipal government. Just to be clear, there is not a porta potty near the area that Jeff was in. Well, how would how would Lindsay Cory Bory Fink know this? Okay, and who's she going to be calling a liar here in a minute? It was also late at night, and that area was closed. We went through four years of a mayor that was dishonest, deceitful, and a liar. And now we're going through an, an additional four years of one that she doesn't want to admit. We certainly, we most certainly do not want a repeat of that administration. And then... She shows this Prairie Creek Reservoir Incident Report. Now, you got to watch what's going on here. September 29th, 2023, time 10:30 p.m. The incident says, I was back patrolling by Indian Hill. This is at the reservoir. And I pulled in, I noticed a black vehicle parked out by the porta potties. Well, who is Lindsay calling a liar? Is she calling the person that wrote this report a liar? Because the person writing the report says they pulled in by the porta potties. So I'm confused. I pulled up behind the vehicle and turn on spotlight. An unknown male started approaching from the vehicle and stated that and 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 stated that female was using restroom. She said she seen the porta potties as they were driving around the reservoir. As I was take as I was talking to him, 
I told him that he looked familiar. He stated that he was Jeff Robertson, not Robinson, Robertson, president of the city council. The female exited the porta potties and they left, white female with dark hair. All right. Well, my question when I saw this is what crime is she? saying that that Jeff's doing letting a passenger use the bathroom is Jeff committing the crime of <gasps> being a man with a woman <gasps> he's not married I don't know what his dating life is like I don't know if if he's dating or not I don't know I know nothing about that. You want to know why? Because I don't give a damn. It's none of my business. Okay? So, I'm not the only person who felt, though, that this... I bet they were fortune-telling out there, Yoko. Oh, Yoko Duo. You know, a lot of craziness happens at the... Uh, happens at the reservoir. You know, what What happens at the reservoir stays at the reservoir. Anywho. The people under this post say, I'm confused, Lindsay Corey Bory Fink. What is the illegal behavior? Lindsay Corey Bory Fink says, and I cannot even believe this. He was trespassing. It was after hours. To which point, and you're not going to be able to see this, I know, but just trust me. Beth writes, shares the rules for Prairie Creek, and she highlights it for Lindsay. Let you know. Prairie Creek Park closes at 11 p.m. Okay, it closes at 11 p.m. Let's go back to the original report. When was this report taken? Oh, that's right. 10.30 p.m.? A whole 30 minutes before the park closes? Someone wrote, Lindsay, the mention of the porta potty in this report is by the writer of the report. Looks like B. Smith, maybe. Are you claiming the writer of the report is lying? I don't support Jeff in this election, but this does come across as questioning the integrity of the writer of the report rather than pointing out any illegal activity by Jeff. About five minutes after that last post. Lindsay Corey Bory Fink deleted that entire comment thread. But not before I got pictures of it. Folks, they are lying just to be lying. And they think it's okay because that's what their boss is doing. Dan is lying just to be lying. Lying just to be lying, folks. You're not quite accurate there. Dan is lying to make himself look good. Yeah. And his staff is lying to try to make Jeff look bad. Yes, yes. One of them, they're both okay. Well, yeah. Cause in, in their not. eyes. You know, if you're lying to make Dan look good, that's a good lie. And if you're lying to make Jeff look bad, well, that's a good lie. <laughs> Lindsay is obviously illiterate. She will also lie for me. <laughs> uh, folks, this is what I'm talking about. Why? Is it bad for a man to be with a woman? 
I I don't know. I I you know. I I definitely know times that it's got it's got me in trouble. <laughs> I just, and I, I really thought about sharing that or not sharing that because I thought, you know what? She took it down and if people didn't see it, I don't want to give them any more fodder for Jeff. But you know what? To me, I think that, that if I was Jeff, I would, I would frame that because when you're willing to lie, just 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 to lie you know like that i just have to ask what what else are you capable of when dan says i am responsible for can pack i am responsible for the white river lofts who out there is buying that Who, who is saying, yes, he's right. We want him as our mayor. Ah, uh, yeah, Audie. Something, something, something. So, is it lie or slander? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, folks, there's a lot more that goes wrong with the State Board of Accounts. Please, please, access those... You can find them very easily. All you need to do is you need to type in on Google Indiana State Board of Accounts. When you go to the Indiana State Board of Accounts, you can you, you go there and you type search for audit report. You click on that. You take the little uh, clicker to Delaware County. And then when you go, it says unit type. You, you type in either Muncie City or you take it to, to City and it will pull up Muncie and it's the first top three reports, which is what you will want to see. Everybody needs to read through those. Everybody needs to read through them. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up, but before we do, I want to show everybody, I'm not going to go through these fully, uh, because there's too much, and we've been going. It's all—it's it's almost two uh, hours into it. So I'm just gonna show you guys this, and then we're gonna—I'm gonna roll out, and we'll we'll go through these uh, on another episode. But I did finally get the uh, the reports today uh, on the candidates. I got Ryden hours. Ryan Hour's report is 30 pages long. Jeff's report is 47 pages long. I mean, these are these are pretty substantial, pretty substantial reports. Um, I also received uh, reports for um, Dale Basham, Aaron Clark, She Who Shall Not Be Named. And uh, Belinda Munson. I then asked for anything that James King may have filed this year, but I don't know if they just didn't give it to me or he didn't file anything. But they they didn't say anything one way or another. So um, that is that's that. Um, I just a couple quick things I noticed. Uh, Greg Martz, the guy with the fire uh, houses, he he has donated more to Ridenauer. Uh Greg Martz and uh, GM Development, I think in total donated another either two thousand or four thousand dollars. I think it's two thousand, um, and uh, uh, a couple of other a couple of other interesting people donated, and uh, it's just very. Very strange. So we will go through all of these and uh, and break it all down. But I wanted to let everybody know that I did get it. I didn't have to put up as much of a fight. 
with the, uh, the, the Delaware County clerk or the Delaware County uh, attorney, John Brooke. Matter of fact, I finally called Brooke's office and then they returned my call and told me that uh, Spangler had them ready for me and I could go pick them up. So thank God. Also, it was like the olden days because he just gave them over to me. I did not have to pay for them. So that's that's good too. So um, if if you're out there and you're requesting these and they're making you pay, you, you might ask why. So just keep that in mind, folks. But then lastly, just this is the postscript. Listen, there's like 12 days left, well, 13 days left in this election. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 13 as of now. It'll be 12 tomorrow. The next 12 days is going to be nuts. Just make sure that you're verifying everything that you see. If you're hearing weird stuff, just don't buy into it. And, and try, to, try to dispel as many of the bullshit rumors as you can. Because it's like whack-a-mole. We need to fight all of these. And as soon as you beat one of these mindless knobs down in one area, five more mindless knobs pop up over here. And it's hard to get them all. But I believe that good can conquer this crap. I truly, maybe I'm stupid, but I truly do believe that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm making the predictions for the show, uh, or for for the uh, not not pr predictions really. It's not really predictions. I, I'm going to give my my slate. The people I, I, I do it two different ways. I'll give my slate of who I believe will win. My slate of who I want to win. And then we'll talk about if there's a difference. I'll probably do that Tuesday, one week from the election. One week from the election, we'll do it. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank, uh, I want to thank uh, the uh, coach, uh, counselor uh, Rex Peckinpah, for being on and talking with us. Please share, 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 share this information around so people can see uh, what he has to say down in uh, Newcastle. I will be going back and putting timestamps in this so people can find out when he was on and then so people can find out when I talked about the other Muncie related topics. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very, very, very much. Don't fall for the mindless bullshit. You guys take care. God bless. Have a good evening. And I will see you back here tomorrow at 9 p.m. Good night.